Hey guys, Positive here, and today I'm going to be going over a guide on one of my favorite tier 10 heavy tanks, especially recently I've been playing it a lot, the IS-7. So a lot of people call the IS-7 power creeped, whatnot, but is that really so? And how do you, more importantly, how do you play this Soviet steel monster, which I think is still the king of aggression? Uh, find out in today's video. So to start off with, we're going to be comparing the IS-7 to two other tier 10 heavies that I think are pretty similar, the IS-4 and the Weezid 113. So right off the bat, when it comes to the gun, you can see that the IS-7's gun leaves much to be desired. First of all, the DPM is pretty bad actually. It's the third worst at tier 10, only better than the VK-72 and the mouse. So the IS-7 will not be doing damage quickly, which means that you need to keep this gun firing for just as much as you can. Otherwise, it just simply will not have the DPM to make up for it compared to other heavy tanks. However, it's not that much worse than the IS-4, but it is massively worse than the 113. Moving on, the penetration on the standard rounds is actually best in class at 260. That's quite it's quite nice. It's not too much of an upgrade over like the IS-4, but compared to the 255 APCR pen that the Weezy 113 has, 260 is quite nice. However, you do need that standard pen because the premium ammo pen is atrocious. It is 303, meaning you cannot slice through things such as German Super Heavies. You will need to hit the lower plate. But in general, you, you should really just use the AP on the IS-7 because that maintains the IS-7's gun's greatest strength, which is its 460 Alpha. 460 means that you effectively outtrade everything at tier 10 other than the E100 slash BK-72 and also TDs. And that is really one of the strong points of the IS-7, especially compared with tanks like the IS-4 and the 113, is when you hit something, it does it is really satisfying to hit them for that extra 60 of damage over the 113. Moving on, we can see the accuracy is also not brilliant in terms of raw numbers, especially when compared to other heavies. But at least compared to the IS-4, um, contrary to popular belief, the IS-4 is not massively more accurate than the IS-7. So a lot of people tend to believe that the IS-4's gun is not that bad, but then they proceed to turn around and rip on the IS-7 gun. Well, at 0.2.2 gun handling and 2.63 second aim time, it is the same as the IS-4. However, the base dispersion is mildly worse. That being said, however, even though the IS-7 is fairly inaccurate, it is still better than its tier 8 counterparts. So if we take a look at the Glacial, for instance, the Glacial can't even compare against the IS-7. So if you're used to this tier 8 IS spam guns, the IS-7 gun is still an upgrade, which is quite nice. However, of course, it's still much weaker than the 113. Moving on through this comparison, once we get past the gun, it's just better news for the IS-7 because the gun, other than the alpha damage, is admittedly the weakest part of the IS-7. So first off, we'll talk about the mobility, and right away you can see you've got this excellent 50 km per hour, 50 km per hour speed limit. This does make it the fastest heavy tied with the 113 and the AMX 50B for the fastest tier 10 heavy in terms of raw speed limit. And also the i7 does get these nice power to weight ratios to back it up as well. Admittedly, they are weaker than the 113 due to worse ground resistances. However, if you get this thing downhill on level ground on a road or if you hit engine power boost, you will, you will have no issues hitting that 50 km hour speed limit. However, unlike the 113, you do get three degrees more traverse making it 23 versus 20 on the 113. Admittedly, the IS-7 still kind of turns like a boat, but it's less like a boat than the 113. So for those of you who really hate the traverse on the 113, the IS-7 does have an edge over it, which means that equipment-wise, you can actually choose to run the uh, engine power boost on IS-7, whereas you might run the traverse over the, the 113, which helps to make up for the slightly weaker power to weight ratio. Compared to other heavies like the IS-4, it's just no contest. The IS-4 is much slower in terms of speed limit, and also it's got a weaker power to weight. And then compared to other heavies in the tier, it's just no contest. So if we were to compare it to like the E5, for instance, you've got massively more speed limit. And like the power to weight ratio is pretty similar, but again, that 50 km hour speed limit is just such a difference maker because it means the IS-7 can get where it needs to go early in the battle and it'll be on the front lines before pretty much any other heavy tank. And moving past mobility, as far as camo value goes, well, it's a heavy tank. There's not much camo to speak of. You really shouldn't care because it is a heavy without much accuracy. And also, like, view range is 264, which is 
it's pretty standard for a communist heavy, but it's still on the lower end, especially if you compare it to like other heavies or even medium tanks. The IS-7 will not be outspotting anything anytime soon. Although admittedly, since it is a communist heavy and it is quite short, you do get slightly more camo than like a Western heavy like the FD-215B. But like I said, really shouldn't matter because the IS-7 is more of an up in your up close and personal sort of tank. As for the other things, HP is 2050, which is admittedly a little disappointing actually. A lot of heavies in the tier will outclass the IS-7 hit points wise. I mean, it's better than the 113 here, and it's better than medium tanks, but 2050 is kind of a letdown, especially if you compare it to like IS-4 with 2200, E-100, which has like 23. So for a heavy tank designed to soak hits, 2050 doesn't last super long, which means you have to rely more on bouncing shells rather than just being able to soak it up with your hit point pool. And as for the armor, we'll just go over this in Armor Inspector. So here we've got the IS-7's armor profile up in Armor Inspector, and then right now what we have shooting at is the FE-215B, which is a fairly standard heavy tank gun. So right away you can see that there's a lot of red against standard shells. That being said, the, the lower plate is quite weak, and there's not a whole lot you can do to make it not weak. So you can't actually angle it downwards on a slope unless you want to pretty much expose half your tank. So you can't do that, you also really can't angle because otherwise you expose tons of your side. So no matter what, your lower plate will always be a weak spot unless you can hide it with some sort of cover. And also, you probably already know this if you're watching this video, but being a pike nose tank is most effective when you're fighting things straight on. So right away you can see we're, we're talking like 290 millimeters plus protection versus AP shells and against APCR when front on. Without using gun depression, it's still like 320 effective and then against heat, it's even more. And in case you guys didn't know this, the reason why it has different amounts of effective armor against different different types of ammunition is due to normalization. But you can see that against heat ammunition, we're talking like 340 almost millimeters of effective armor. So if you're hiding the lower plate, most tanks will be hard pressed to try and punch through this upper plate, especially if you're hiding, hiding the lower plate. And if you use the gun depression, it's just LOL, good luck. Because then we're talking, what is this, 460 some millimeters of armor? It's just ridiculous. However, the IS 7 does have a turret chief weakness, which is kind of unfortunate. So, if they do load gold, or if you find yourself facing an IS 7, you should load gold and aim for these turret chiefs. This is probably the primary weak spot of the IS 7. However, in pub matches, you can generally rely on your turret because A, most people don't load gold, and B, most people are too afraid to shoot it at the ISM's turret cheeks. But if you are pl planning on taking this into a competitive match, these cheeks will be a liability, so you can't really poke for too long. Moving on, the IS-7 does have that legendary IS series black hole spaced armor. And I'd like to point, just point out a couple facts about this. A lot of people have the misconception that it's this spaced armor that makes the IS-7 so good, especially on the sides. So I'd just like to clear this up. So if we were to hide the spaced armor, you'll notice that, look at these sides. These sides are super sloped. Do you see this? This is the real reason why the IS-7 soaks up shells behind the spaced armor. Because if you were to shoot at this with an AP round or an APCR round, which ricochets at 70 degrees, and it's so angled, it's basically just an auto bounce. This is the real reason why I-7 sides soak up so many hits, especially that area where the space armor is. And then the space armor does help because it means that if you shoot at it with a heat shell, it does cause this penetration loss, which makes it harder to pen. So when you're shooting at the I-7 side, just avoid this strip. However, you can shoot the upper side which is admittedly less angled, although it's still somewhat sloped as you can see. But really, the weakness of the IS-7 side is this area under the tracks, which means that as an IS-7 driver, you should just assume that this is where people are going to aim for, because it is completely flat and it's only 100 millimeters thick, so if people get a good angle on you like this, they'll, they really won't have too many issues trying to pen the side of the IS-7. And also, if you angle it, they can also pen the upper plate, which is pretty unfortunate. The rear armor, pretty much non-existent. And that about covers it for the IS-7's armor profile. So it's better than the 113, especially the upper plate, because the 113's upper plate relies a lot on its angling, so it can be penned. The turret's also a little bit better than the 113, 
However, the hull armor is probably worse than the IS-4 because it cannot be angled. As far as equipment goes on the IS-7, I run a fairly standard loadout. So first thing I do is I would run Rammer. Despite the 303 APCR pen being really awful, the I-7 does not have heat shells, so it only gets 5% extra pen, meaning it only goes up to 318, which is still awful. So you should run Rammer, because increased EPM means that you can play aggressively much more easily than if you had been running calibrated shells. And then I would also run... Uh, I run defense system. Yeah, you should definitely run defense system, actually, because the I-7 does get ammo racked a lot. You definitely need to reduce the chance of ammo rack explosion. So this is the one tank where I actually fully recommend defense system over the other one, because usually these are pretty interchangeable. I also run optics because you can't really hide in bushes with the I-7. It's not a thing. Um, I also run gun lang drive because I-7's accuracy sucks nuts. And also, you won't be at ranges long enough to make full use of supercharge. So, GLD, I also run improved assembly, because as I mentioned in the garage, the base hit point pool of 2050 is kind of disappointing. And also, in general with the IS-7, the enhanced armor doesn't really do you a whole lot of good. If they can pen you, they'll pen you, and if they can't pen you, they can't. So, I would run improved assembly. I run engine accelerator on my IS-7, because I find the traverse to be just enough. However, if you really think that the I-7 Traverse is too bad for you to deal with, then Improved Control is also a viable option. Finally, I run Vert Stab. This is to help you take faster snapshots, because again, you shouldn't really always be fully aiming the I-7. That should almost never happen. It's not a sniper. Don't do it. And if you're one of those people who run the last two equipment slots, I run Toolbox and Consumable Delivery System. As far as provisions go, this is actually the one tank, the only tank in my garage actually where I run protective kit just because I've been ammo racked full HP so many times that I have to run this and then otherwise I just run big food and big fuel. As far as consumables go, uh, engine power boost, double repair kits. I don't really like adrenaline. Uh, if you really want to run adrenaline, you do you. But I find that for the kind of aggressive plays that I like to make in the i7, engine power boost is much better. And that should really do it for all the nerdy math and stats stuff, loadout stuff. I mean, what you really came here to see is how, how the IS-7 still holds up in battle, right? So without further ado, we're going to play a couple Ace Tanker games and just to highlight the fairly straightforward play style of the IS-7. So here we go, rolling out our first battle in the IS-7 on Mayan Ruins. And so basically, the moral of the story with the IS-7 is hard hit fast. So you use the mobility and the armor and you want to use it to take key positions right away. And since you've got that armor and you've got that mobility, you don't really need to care too much about your teammates because you're the IS-7 and you do what you want. So here on my room, we're going to go straight for the center position because I know I can hold down there and I see my teammates following me, which is a nice bonus. And right away, the enemy starts capping C. Based on their lineup, I know it must be the SDB because only he's fast enough to get there right away. So I, I know he's alone because he's the only medium. I don't care. I rush over the bridge and we slam a shell into him. I'm just going to keep going because it's the IS-7. I go 50 kilometers an hour and I'm not afraid to use it. So luckily for me, that SDB does not find the shot into our lower plate. He bounces. That's probably because he's he's got that low pen APCR. Because if it were any higher, you'd probably have no issues penning me. And this is that nice alpha damage showing itself off there. Because you got that nice alpha, you also get that great HE as we slam about 500, 550 odd damage into that STB. And then we finish off the waffle. And we're only a couple, like about a minute or so into this game. And we're already sitting pretty on, what is that, like 1800 damage? And that's really what the IS-7 is great at. You're just the first in, and then you blow some stuff up. However, that being said, you still should watch out for the IS-7's fairly fairly low DPM because with the IS-7's low DPM, you can get overwhelmed if you take fight if you bite off a little bit more than you can chew. Now, in order to showcase the armor, this is what happens when you hold down an IS-7. So here we're trading off against the 100. There's pretty much these guys just don't really stand a chance against the hull down IS-7. So when you're playing hull down with the IS-7. There's not a whole lot the enemy can do, so here we go, peeking onto this E100. 
as we dunk a shell into his lower plate, and he bounced ricochets off the right right of a pike nose. And I think he was probably aiming for the ISA, but he just missed and he happened to hit us. Luckily enough for us, it did bounce. And you can see that even though the IS-7 does have a pretty crappy APCR pen, the key is really to not ever have to use the APCR. You can see that I'm at these, especially at these close ranges, I've got no issues really slamming shells into the enemy's weaknesses. However, that 113 does put a shell through our upper plate. Sorry, not, not our upper plate, our lower plate. Because as I highlighted in the garage, if you're not properly hiding that, it's a pretty easy pen as that 113 just showed us forcing me to back off. And now we're just going to continue to play hull down using this ridge line. And we're just going to shut down the tortoise. Something I forgot to mention earlier about the stats is that the I-7 does get a fairly healthy 6 degrees of gun depression, meaning that you can actually play hull down reasonably well. It's not The gun depression isn't a massive weakness like it was on, say, like the IS-3 where you only had 5 degrees. So 6 degrees is quite healthy. And it also means that we have no issues slamming another shell into the lower plate of that 113. Luckily enough for us, the Waffenträger misses like, what is that, his like third shell he's trying to hit us with. And we show him how you really hit as we hit him back for 639. Once again, that is one of the aspects of the IS-7 I do like is that healthy alpha damage. Like when you hit someone with the IS-7, it's really, it's really satisfying because you know they're going to feel that. And... Now at this point we're just wrapping up the game. Just one more I-7 to go. And we finished the game on 6,422 damage and four kills. Pretty respectable result for the I-7. So closing it out with a mastery badge, 1,500 XP. And that pretty much just showcased what the I-7 is all about. You just get up in people's faces and you just bully them with your armor and your alpha damage. And as you noticed, I really didn't really engage anything beyond probably like a hundred meters or so, so the poor accuracy of the I-7 really didn't have its chance to show its head. And also at those ranges, you shouldn't have any issues aiming at people's weak spots either. Now here we go on our next game. We're on Port Bay. And so once again, we're going to use the mobility of the I-7, and we're going to try and take a key position. And in this case, we're going to go straight for the island. So unlike other heavy tanks, the IS-7 is not constrained by that silly speed limit nonsense. No, the IS-7 goes 50 kilometers an hour, as you've probably had heard me say multiple times throughout this video, and you're probably sick of me already. But regardless, we can use this mobility and take positions that you would otherwise need a medium tank to take. So in this case, we get across to the island pretty much unscathed as we pass by that 268 who's trying to get a shot on us. Luckily for us, he misses though, and now we're an I-7 on the island. So, the competition in front of us is not particularly stiff. When it comes to just this hull down trading, that Patton, that PTA, they're not going to be able to compete against the I-7. They don't have the alpha damage, they don't have the kind of turret armor that the I-7 does, as that PTA just found out as I slam a nice 455 damage shot into his face. Fortunately for me though, they do get an I-4 over which is quite unfortunate because that is something that can challenge me as we do put an AP shell into his cupola so that is a really lucky shot but at these close ranges like I said the IS-7's fairly poor accuracy isn't too much of a handicap we're trying to find another shot into his cupola unfortunately we don't find it and our team is not faring so hot elsewhere so on Port Bay, something to keep in mind is you see where like the, the enemy tanks are? You always want to push into that spot if you're playing a heavy on Port Bay because A, it's safe from the island as you can see I have no shots on the conf Ponzer, and B, you need to take that spot otherwise your tanks on the island could be in trouble. So since we can't find any shots on that guy, we're going to just sink a shell into the Patton's engine deck. So that Patton, he's getting greedy and he's going for this Yacht Ponzer. This Yacht Ponzer slams him for 980. But, like I said in the garage, you really don't want to be shooting gold with this tank, so you'll notice that the targets I'm shooting at, I haven't actually fired a single one of my gold shells. So I'm just trying to find shots with my AP, which it still has that really nice best-in-class standard ammo penetration. And once again, at these close ranges, I've got no difficulty hitting people in the weak spots. And luckily for me, the enemy's team is just feeding me some more damage as they're 
trying to make their, make their way through the river. Now my U50M gets hit, followed by the 57, as I do miss my shot here. However, the situation is looking pretty grim. It's now two to four. It's just me and this one shot E50M. And we've got a gorilla somewhere in the back. At this point, what's going through my head is I need to make a play or we're going to, we're going to lose. And the first thing I've decided to do is I'm, I'm going to clear these pesky tanks out of the corner. They need to go. And I'm going to use, use the armor and the mobility of the IS-7. Now, because the IS-7 does have pretty decent power to weight ratio, it means that when you push something, you can push them pretty quickly. Although, admittedly, you are held back a little bit by the DPM. And even though it, I only need three shots to clear all of these tanks, both the Leopard and this IS-4, you can see it does take me some time as I use the, this slope in the back to get enough gun depression to hit this IS-4 in his driver's hatch. Now, unfortunately for me, they did kill the 50 m and they get my last teammate. However, luckily, uh, the teammates did take one more tank with them, I think. So it's only two left, and I've got an IS-7. And now, the IS-7, in addition to being a great offensive tank, the IS-7 can also hold its ground quite well. So I've got a superior position to these guys, and I'm going to make sure to take advantage of it. First off, I'm going to try and kill this T-57 Heavy because he's a two-shot, and I can't really deal with that enemy IS-7 at the moment. But I'm still pretty healthy. So since I know the IS-7 is behind me, I'm just going to use the mobility. I'm going to try and get away from the IS-7 first. I'm going to go straight for this T-57. So T-57 hits my upper side armor, which means he donks the first, and he donks the second off my upper... Or no, he pens the second, but he donks his third off my upper plate. And that's just something that you can do with the IS-7 that you can't really do with, say, like a Weezy 113. Or, or even like a slower heavy like the IS-4, because the IS-4 would be too slow to push that guy. So the, the T-57 would have been able to line up his shots better, and the 113 is too soft to bounce those shells. Only, only the IS-7 can really come out in that situation doing well. And now it's down to the 1v1. So now that I'm 1v1ing this IS-7, I can also show off how you kill an IS-7. So you saw me just aiming for his tracks there, and now I'm loading gold, and I'm trying to pen his upper plate. However, I hit the gun, and hitting the gun means that it adds 50 millimeters of extra armor to him. But basically, knowing that my upper plate is really strong, I'm trying to keep him in a face hug whenever he fires, because he'll have a difficult time trying to pen me. And at the same time, I'm trying to load APCR, which is actually the only shells I have left, against his cheeks. And luckily for me, he leaves me on a one shot and he keeps bouncing and I end the game on 6,300 damage and five kills. Pull, pulling out a pretty solid 1v2 at the end there. And just a host of medals and another another 1,500 XP game. And that's really what happens when you just keep that IS-7 gun in the game. Because the IS-7 gun has that low DPM, if you just take those key positions and you just keep it firing for the duration of the battle, you're sure to come out on top. Now moving on, we are on our third and final game for this video. We're playing here on Alpenstadt. Once again, following the same pattern as our usual battles, we're just going to use the mobility of the IS-7 to take a strong early game position where we can make full use of our turret armor. But we're going to roll out straight to this bridge. On Alpenstadt, I do like to play around with this bridge because it is good hull down cover. It allows me to try and get a feel for the enemy positions. I don't spot anything yet, so I'm I'm just gonna rotate out now. And that is again one of the one of the great use of the ISM's mobility is you can just use that mobility and you can use it to rotate. Now my team does spot out two, three actually enemy tank, four tanks in the town, and it caught me pretty much completely by surprise, so I do a double take and now I've been caught out in the open by these two medium tanks. Admittedly it was pretty unexpected because Generally when I go to that spot by the bridge, I do expect to spot the enemy if they go that direction. So unfortunately for me, the Leopard 1 slams one, probably into our lower plate, I think. But this Leopard 1, I'm, I'm pretty sure he's mostly isolated, so I'm just going to go straight for him. And once again, it's the mobility and the armor of the IS-7 that allows you to make these plays that other heavy tanks really wouldn't be able to. As that T-54 donks one off of our side. Now I'm in a 1 versus 2 situation. Admittedly, this is not a great scenario for the IS-7 because the IS-7 doesn't really have the DPM to keep up with these medium tanks, especially with two of them. But luckily for me, these medium tanks are not very smart and they're not flanking me. So I can just face hug this T-54 to 
pretty much nullify his gun. I don't know what he's doing. He's trying to like line up a shot on my lower plate. And then this Leopard is also not really pushing now that I have Team H with him, with me. So we do get the T-54 and I just leave my teammates to finish off the Leopard. And now I can turn around and I've got this perfect hold down spot because the enemy team just rolled our heavy tanks and we're already down three to two. But now I can use this hold down spot and I can play hold down against these enemy tanks. I think at this point you guys are starting to know as a pattern. Just find a nice hold down spot, use the turret armor, and then just slowly whittle away the enemy with your really pitiful DPM. And as I said before, you really shouldn't have to load gold against most of your targets. So even though the IS-7 has admittedly really crappy gold pen of 303, I think in this entire video I'm, I've fired like three or four gold shells and all of those were at the end of that last game against the IS-7 because this 260 AP pen really has no issues slicing through most most targets, at least in their weak spots. Well, going back to this game, it's three to four, it's quite close. If I want to win this, I'm really gonna need to put into higher gear. I take another one of my teammates down, but in return, I do manage to get this E100. And now it's two versus three. My teammate's on a one shot. That mouse is still very healthy. That 50B is very healthy. And this 50B has caught us out in the open. The Fosh kills the teammate. And once the Fosh does end up killing the 4202, that leaves me in a pretty awful one versus three scenario. As I'm desperately trying to get back, now that this 50B has caught me out in the open, I put another one to the 50B, but the mouse pegs me, and now it's looking pretty bad. There's three still very healthy tanks, and I'm down to 528 points. So, I do manage to pick up the Fosh, who got a little bit greedy as, as he overextended. Somehow the mouse puts one into me, I have no clue how that penned. Because I'm pretty sure that the mouse should not be able to hit my upper plate, but regardless, I may, luckily the 50B bounces off me, the mouse bounces off me, and that's IS-7 armor for you there. Two miracle bounces leaving me on 80 hit points as I managed to get the side of this mouse. And so now it's looking like this game is finally under control as I slam another two shots into the side of this mouse. And I don't really want to keep this position because I'm worried he's going to find one into my side so I back off. And the mouse gets me in a face hug. And in this tragic twist of fate, 303 APCR pen shows its ugly head as I'm unable to do anything against this face hugging mouse. Can't find a shot into his turret cheek. His lower plate, it's a little dicey. I might have had a shot there, but I decided against it. So I'm, try I'm still trying to find a good angle into his turret cheek. Take a bad shot, a bounce, and the mouse shuts me down. Not really sure how he penned that, probably into the upper plate. Alas, heartbreak. I fail to win this one versus three, and I lose on 7,200 average damage. Although I'd like, even though the I IS-7's 303 APCR pen really let me down, I'd like to think that it was the IS-7's armor that got me there in the first place. And I hate to end the video on a heartbreak, but I'm gonna end it more or less here. There's two things you should be taking away from this video. It's drive fast, smash face. That's about IS-7 summed up pretty neatly. I hope you enjoyed the video. Hope you have a wonderful day and bye.